Hello again, brothers and sisters. So, I want to talk to you a little bit about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to work on my website a little bit while I'm talking and show you just how this is done. Some things. It's really easy. I use HostGator. Um, for the, I don't know, I'm not really that, I don't really know that much about all this, but I use HostGator and then I use Weebly to build the website. HostGator's for the domain, I guess. Anyways, I added this hard to be understood section where I'll, I'll go through some things and I put where Old Testament saints regenerate and uh, who are the sons of God. Um, which I haven't worked on this one yet at all. I'm working on this one first, but I put it up there anyways just to get ready for it. But I made this page, and I was going to do everything on one page, but I like to add the whole the whole verses a lot, which I can't always if there's too many references to a subject. I'll, I'll just list some of the verses, but I like to put the whole the verse the whole verse up. And that takes up a lot of space and stuff, so I decided to break this down into different sections to explain things. Um, but I got regeneration defined, Old Testament, New Testament examples, and these aren't all finished yet. But uh, I'm going to work on the indwelling defined one. Okay, so I'm going to go to pages, add page, standard page, no header. What will I name it? Um, I don't know. That dwelling, I guess. Hide page navigation view. Save and edit. Now I'll go back to the hard to be understood. Go back to where Old Testament saints regenerate. Now I'll go to this and link it to that page that I just made and dwelling save that so now it will go there which will just be a blank page right now okay now I go over here text drag it over here and ready to start so I'm just gonna read from this packet that I printed out from IBRI.org. I don't know if I agree with everything they teach or not. Um, a guy named Robert J. Dunswheeler wrote this. Uh, I'm not really sure where to start. Let's see. Having briefly reviewed recent opinion on the subject, let us move on to definition, a proposed definition of indwelling. As background to such a definition, I believe it is necessary to review the scriptural teaching concerning the omnipresence of the Holy Spirit. Um, so, I, and I just want to say that, you know, many may have wrongly believed as I did that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit means that the Holy Spirit is in you well I mean that after all that is what the Bible says right you know the Spirit is in you does that mean you know the Holy Spirit is like between your heart and your lungs inside your fleshly body uh, that's not exactly what it means okay um, so we need to really understand what does the indwelling really mean because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent okay it is everywhere uh, so I'll just continue. The Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is present everywhere in all his perfections. He fills space and transcends it. He occupies the same space that the matter and energy of the universe occupies. He is not excluded from any bit of space by any physical object or by any finite person. Uh, finite, I guess. He is present in every mountain, tree, flower, and human being in this world. That this is not pantheism, but Christian theism, may be shown by quotation from Charles Hodge. He writes, Everywhere in the Old and New Testament, God is represented as a spiritual being, as everywhere present and everywhere imparting life and securing order, present in every blade of grass, yet guiding Arcturus in his course, uh, marshalling the stars as a host, calling them by their names, present 
present also in every human soul, giving it understanding, endowing it with gifts, working in it both to will and to do. The implications of the Spirit's omnipresent for the concept of indwelling are tremendous. In the sense of space, the Holy Spirit is always present in every human being's body. In the sense of space, the Holy Spirit is just as present in the unregenerate person's body as in the regenerate person's body. And this has always been true from the moment of mankind's creation until the present moment. For the Holy Spirit to indwell a human being then cannot mean simply to be present in the space of a believer's uh, in the space a believer's body occupies. Since the Holy Spirit occupies all of space, so if indwelling is taken to mean that when a person is an unbeliever, the Holy Spirit is outside his or her body, but when a person becomes a believer, the Holy Spirit comes inside his or her body, the concept of indwelling is erroneous. What, then, can indwelling possibly mean? I would propose that the difference between the way the Holy Spirit is present in the unbeliever and the way he is present in the believer is one of personal relationship. The relationship the Holy Spirit sustains to the regenerate person is radically different from the relationship he sustains to the unregenerate person. And the most basic difference in these relationships is that the Holy Spirit is savingly related to the believer, but is not savingly related to the non-believer. If the Holy Spirit is present in both the believer and non-believer, but does not indwell the unbeliever, then indwelling takes on a, mechanic, a technical meaning. But let us extenuate the, this meaning further. The Holy Spirit is not welcome in the unbeliever's house, but is an intruder, an undesirable alien, a squatter. The Holy Spirit is welcome in the believer's house, and is a beloved friend, an honored guest, a resident. The Holy Spirit is present in the unbeliever, but is not at home in him, as he is in the believer. To the unbeliever, the Holy Spirit is a stranger and an enemy. To the believer, he is a trusted helper and a friend. To the unbeliever, the Holy Spirit is a restrainer and a convincer of sin, a disturber of the peace. Uh, for the believer, he is a sanctifier and a surer of salvation, a consecrator and a comforter. I would further propose the concept that indwelling involves the sustaining of the spiritual life imparted at regeneration. Thus, I would define indwelling as the relationship which the Holy Spirit sustains to the believer subsequent to regeneration, in which he helps, rules, consecrates, assures, comforts, sanctifies, empowers, and sustains the life imparted at regeneration. Indwelling is thus the Holy Spirit's continuance of that new relationship and ministry begun in regeneration. Um, so I'm going to use that right now, which I might change things, but... Uh, so I'm going to type this out, what I read, not all of what I just read, just the definition. Uh, let's see here. Indwelling as that re re relationship which the Holy Spirit sustains to the believer subsequent to regeneration. Uh, in which he helps, rules, consecrates, assures, comforts, sanctifies, empowers, and sustains the life imparted at regeneration. Indwelling is thus the Holy oops, Spirit's <laughs> uh, continuance of that new relationship and ministry begun in regeneration. Let me try to read over this. I know there's already spelling errors and stuff on here on this website. Seems all good.
Uh, so I was going to go into the verses that speak of indwelling, but since this video is already like 10 minutes, I guess I'll just stop here. But So I just want, want you to think about that, what indwelling really means, um, and how indwelling and regeneration are linked, which I can go into in another video. I already have a little some verses on that, but um, I'll go ahead and publish this and it saves everything that I just did. So I'll stop the video here. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, check out the website, acceptyourbeconverted.com, and I'll be constantly adding to it. There's a bunch of unfinished articles, so uh, but I'm working on getting them done as I'm studying as well. So thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.